Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. I hope that you guys enjoyed this Valentine's. If you did, definitely comment below. Let me know how you spent it for those of you guys that don't really celebrate or those of you guys that are single. I hope you treated yourself. Love is love and it starts from within. So Anyways, let's get into the love readings. This is going to be for new love and old love as well. Let's get into it. If you guys are interested in any of the services that we provide, you can find the link on the description box below. I want to wish all of my Aquarians happy birthday. We're going to start off with you guys since it is your month. And moving forward, I'm going to be starting with the month of the zodiac sign that is their birth month so let's kick off with aquarius let's see what's going on with aquarius in love spirit gets ancestors and archangels please guide us allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for aquarius love life give us three cards to represent new love and three cards to represent old flame see what's going on with aquarius sun moon rising venus Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love. And old flame. Right, here we go. Let's see what's going on with you guys. What can you expect this month? We're going to also shuffle some oracle cards. As you guys can see here, we have about three different decks, three different oracle cards here. <clears throat> oh, give us the final messages for Aquarius and Moon Raising Venus regarding their new love and old love. Final message you want to communicate or you want to convey here for my lovely Aquarius. All right, there we go. All right, we're going to start off with new love for you, Aquarius. We have here the Ten of Wands, the Temperance, and the Seven of Cups. So I see you guys being burdened. Um, perhaps you're experiencing or a feeling of lack of momentum. There's almost like this start and stopping type of motion here that I'm seeing. Um, I'm going to be honest. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it could be that currently you're dealing, <laughs> currently you're dealing with a lot of things on your plate, or it could be that your partner has a lot of things right now. I see them scattered um, energetically wise and almost feeling like a burdens burdensome type of energy. Uh, Ten of Wands always indicates, you know, being exhausted, um, carrying a lot or having a lot of responsibilities with temperance here. They are asking you to be patient. Seven of Cups does feel like being able to, you're kind of hesitant or wondering if you should embrace other opportunities or um, letting your mind go rather quickly with assumptions. And what they're saying here is just be patient. You have the temperance right at the center. It's about being patient. It's about letting the dust settle. So again, it could be you that you're feeling very busy, like you have a lot of things going on for the month, um, or it could be your partner and it could feel like almost there's a distancing there happening, but it's not really a distancing. I think it has more to do with your mind and insecurity issues. A lot of the times that can play a trick on this. Um, when we've experienced a lot of... Um, negative experiences and relationships or connections, it could be easy the moment you start to feel them drift away. It could be easy to jump to conclusions or to assume. Um, but temperance here right at the center is indicating having the need to be patient, having the need to put in the effort or to be patient in order to, it's almost like planting a seed. You got to water it. You got to nurture it. You got to be patient. It's not going to grow overnight. So Again, I feel that the Seven of Cups has more to do with your energy, Aquarius. So try the best you can to be clear and concise on what it is that you want. 
If you often find yourself in this connection, wondering if you should continue, if it's even worth it, are they wasting your time? Um, and this is an energy, again, if it's a pattern, something that you've experienced in the past, it has more to, it speaks more to the insecurities of yourself, things that you need to heal or that you need to release in order to be a fully present in this new connection or in this new relationship. It does have potential. Again, uh, 10 of wands is heavy, some burdensome type of energy, having a lot of responsibilities because it is facing temperance. It's almost like them trying to find the perfect time, um, not trying to drag you into their drama type of energy. So again, be patient. And your Oracle card here is financial constraints. So that could be one of the issues of why uh, there's a bit of distancing right now or not a lot of communication. They have a lot of responsibilities is the first thing that came to mind when I pulled out the 10 of wands. So it could be that they're having difficulty in their finances. It could be that there's a lot of stress at work. Or like I said, this could also represent uh, just feeling tied to responsibilities a lot of the times, even if the person is, you know, uh, independent or whatnot, if they are very close or very bound to their family, sometimes, you know, the family could be dealing with a lot of difficulties or a lot of challenges and they may be affected with this energy. So that could be one of the reasons why uh, they're distant. Okay. All right. Now let's go to old flame. Let's see what's going on here for you, Aquarians. We have the wheel, the devil, and the king of wands. So there is definitely a wanting to revisit this connection. Um, not fully, not fully accepting um, a lot of the toxicity that this connection had. It's almost like kind of trying to glance over the fact that you guys were in a toxic situation or it got to the point of becoming very toxic. And it's like they are mostly focusing on the obtaining of you. Um, so this gives me kind of like stalker vibes. It gives me uh, the energy of I'm wanting to have them because at some point I had them. Um, this is, you know, a person that is still energetically attached to you. They're not ready to let go. Um, and for some of you guys, you may be experiencing them having like explosive reactions for some, it could be that they bombard you with messages, like text messages, like, why aren't you answering me? Um, why aren't you responding back type of thing? Or why are you posting this? Why are you posting that type of energy? Even though you're not with them anymore, it's like they still feel entitled. Um, but the wheel here here is representing that you are going through an upswing. There is momentum regarding your love life. And that could be what's kind of drawing them a little batshit crazy. Um, so it could be that you are more proactive in your dating life. It could be that you've made it public. It could be that you're enjoying yourself and that's not sitting well with them. But again, it is toxic energy. So my advice, don't feel like, like, don't get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't get excited that if they've never been the jealous type, all of a sudden, like, don't think that it has to do with the fact that, you know, oh, they, if they really love me, they really realized they're, you know, where they were messing up. It has nothing to do with that. It has more of a narcissistic type of energy. So my advice is, um, just keep it pushing. Now let's see your Oracle card here is yin and yang. So this is about balance. Um, this is about having the need to balance your energy Aquarius for this month. Uh, the remaining of this month. Um, this is about fully embracing, <clears throat> fully embracing your wholeness. And what I mean by that is when I see the devil card with the king of wands, it's a person that is very um, egocentric. It's a person that could be narcissistic. It's a person that doesn't see their partners as equal. They see them more as an object or something that belongs to them. With the yin and yang energy, this is talking to me about Full, being fully able to embrace everything about you and learning to love that about you. Whereas in this energy or with this person, you felt like you were difficult to love or perhaps like you asked for too much. They made you feel this way. 
And it doesn't mean that it's true. It just means that in a way, that's kind of how they emotionally manipulate you. Um, so the yin and yang is talking to me about a connection that is either evolving or a connection that will be manifesting for you um, where they complement you very, very well in comparison to the toxic energy that we're seeing here with the ex-partner. So my advice, again, keep it pushing. Don't embrace anything that is... Um, anything that is of the past, uh, there's a reason why it's in the past. Um, and I don't see this person remorseful whatsoever. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love and three cards for old flame. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus going on in their love life what can they expect for the remainder of the month of february i see sun moon rising venus pisces you guys are going to be and i feel like for a lot of you guys you're already experiencing this there's a lot of changes a lot of transformation that's happening as well as being forced to see things from a very mature perspective um whether you're young whether you're 18 whether you're 69 um, you're going to be challenged in the aspect of having to take uh, self-responsibility for your decisions. And this is not just with love. This is in general. Um, and the reason for this is because you are going towards a cycle where there's going to be a lot of transformation happening. But Saturn's energy as well is kind of... Um, teaching us to mature in certain aspects. And for some of you guys, um, because obviously this is a love reading for some of you guys, this is uh, the energy of having to emotionally mature, emotionally make uh, decisions that are the mature in the mature sense. Whereas in the past, you've done it based off of emotion. Um, and a lot of the times Neptune um, has this tendency of kind of feeling or showing you, making you feel like let's focus on the fantasy of what I want to see in this person versus who this person really is. So there's a, there's a certain aspect of escapism. Um, <clears throat> and with Saturn uh, going into your sign, it's going to be challenging for you guys. It's kind of forcing you to see things for what they really are. And like I said, uh, become much more emotionally mature is the word that comes to mind. All right, here we go. New love and old flame. Pisces. A lot of you guys are going to be meeting new people coming into your life, new partners. You're entering a new cycle. Yes, this can also represent endings. <clears throat> now let's look at the oracle cards here. <laughs> Oracle cards here. What are the spiritual messages that you have for new love and old love or old flame for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Ooh. Okay. That one flipped over. Pisces. You guys may also be feeling like your energy is depleted or you're carrying a lot of heavy energy. Um, making you a little bit more <laughs> emotional. <clears throat> Just try to not submerge yourself in those feelings, acknowledge them, um, you know, acknowledge them, understand where they're coming from, and then release them, let them go. Don't stay in that energy. If you stay in that energy, it could be very depressive type of energy. So you don't want that. Okay. All right, here we go. We have the moon seven of pentacles and the king of wands so there is a situation there is a situation that has you feeling <clears throat> like there's a lot of uncertainty regarding this connection for some of you guys this could represent feeling like you're not fully aware of everything that's happening like there are things that are happening behind the scenes um <clears throat> and almost like being sold an illusion um 
again, we just talked about Saturn's energy, right? Having to see things for what they really are. For some of you guys, it's revisiting a situation from the past um, with this new person that you're dealing with where they portrayed themselves to be very perfect or very um, idealistic to what you were looking for. Um, and then boom, all of a sudden there's a, there's a sudden change in them. And the seven of pentacles indicates to me the hopefulness of I'm waiting for this person to, you know, snap out of it and become who they were at some point when I first started dating them and make sure that that's not an illusion. And what I mean by that is it's very easy to show yourself to be the perfect ideal mate right? All I have to do when getting to know you is pay very close attention to what is important to you. It is being very observant of what excites you, <clears throat> what you don't like, and then imitate myself into that person, right? To become, to make you think that you're, that I'm so perfect for you. And then a couple of month or two months pass. And then all of a sudden I reveal my true character or I push you to the side or I ignore you. There's inconsistency there. And that has you on a hook. Why? Because it's emotional manipulation. Um, it's the hopefulness or the desire to want to revisit the past or to want to see the person who I fell in love with essentially. And what they're asking you here is it's time to really take it in and to realize, was it really who they were or was it a fantasy? Was it who they wanted you to believe they were? So whoever or however they're acting now, that's who they really are. So you got to pay attention to this. Why? Because seven of pentacles indicates to me that it has a lot to do with past experiences. This is a habit, this is something that perhaps on a subconscious level, you have a tendency of doing. And that's how they grip you. And that's how you hold on to relationships longer than you should. And then we have the strategy. This Oracle card is an indication of thinking with the mind, not, you know, listening or reacting on an emotional level or listening to your, what your heart is telling you, because when we disconnect ourselves, from what our mind is telling us, as an example, you have a tendency or a feeling that lately you've been feeling like it's time to move on. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it burn. But then you listen to your heart and your heart's like, no, hold on to this. Wait to see if there's a change. Strategy is about the mind. It's about listening to your mind. It's about being practical versus being hopeful or versus wishing it's about grounding and being practical in matters of love. If it's not working out, babe, walk away from that. <clears throat> All right. So now let's look into the old love here. <clears throat> we have the five of wands, the hanged man, and the five of pentacles. So... <clears throat> If you've been finding lately that your ex-partner is finding every single um, every single opportunity or chance to argue with you, the reason for this is because it's not even about arguing or it's not even about, it's more about getting an arousal out of you, getting a reaction out of you. Um, and the more passive you are, the more they crave or desire your attention. So this person is definitely um, a person that is in the habit of getting attention or getting what they want. Uh, the fact that perhaps this is even a person that didn't believe you would leave them at some point. Um, and now it's like they are going to be up your ass about wanting to prove to you that they want you back in their life. Um, it will progressively, like I said, if you're already experiencing this, like your ex, you know, stalking you or messaging you or um, just trying to find ways to argue with you. Uh, the reason for this is because they're wanting some type of reaction. Uh, a reaction, whether it's good or bad, is a reaction. Instead of <laughs> dead silence and crickets, they cannot stand that. Um, so again, I do see them really wanting to um, 
basically beg for your attention in any shape, way, or form. Do I see any type, any type of action towards it though? Like them actually taking the steps to showing you uh, that they're remorseful, that they're regretting uh, the ending of this relationship. No, I don't see that. I just feel like it has more to do with communication, fast communication. So this could be texting, this could be calling. Um, but again, I feel like they're wanting some type of reaction from you. And it has a lot to do with Pisces. It has a lot to do with the fact that everything you dealt or everything you put up with, uh, with them in the past. Um, it's almost like you became a safe haven for them because they were so used to you, uh, being their comfort, um, and perhaps soothing them in, in a way of giving your unconditional love until you basically had it. So, uh, again, I feel like there is a bit of anger and frustration. The fact that they don't really see you open or even willing to entertain the idea of going back with them. Now, your oracle card here is patience. And patience is all to do with, do not, if you recently broke up with this person, don't try to rush yourself into another relationship. Don't try to, and the reason I'm saying this is because the five of pentacles always indicates the lack of something. This is a love reading, so it's the lack of love. And the lack of love that you've either had or that you felt your previous partners have for you has you in, in this, almost this energy of craving and desire. You have so much love to give. You have so much, you know, compassion, so much love, so much desire to give. And this can put you in a situation of being impatient when it comes to love and romance, something didn't work out. You get out of a relationship and the minute someone gives you attention or the minute someone shows you um, that they're interested in you, it could be very easy for you to run away with the fantasy of what may be of, of, like I said, of that unconditional love that you are craving and that you are very deserving of. But the thing about it is that when we rush into things, we can end one relationship and rush into another. And the previous experience that you had in the previous relationship is not healed. So you're carrying unresolved issues from previous relationships to the new one or the next one without fully healing yourself. And what happens is that those unhealed parts of you will show up. They will come up and affect the current or the future relationship. So again, give yourself time to heal, give yourself time to detach even. For some of you guys, it could be the desire of wanting this person back. And it's like, you're hoping the moment they do, you may feel like you want to rush into let's work it out, let's fix it. And what was the lessons that you experience in that separation. If you rush into things, then there was really, you didn't learn. Um, and you don't wanna keep repeating the same cycle, Pisces. All right, my lovelies. All right. Now let's go to Aries. My lovely Aries, how are you? Let's see what's going on in your love life. Aries, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Give me new love as well as old flame. Three cards for each, please. Aries, sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right, here we go. One, two, three. How are you guys feeling about these major astrological changes that are happening? <clears throat> I will be making a video on how this is going to affect every single sign. <clears throat> you guys may already be feeling these changes in the air. All right, give me the oracle cards for new love and old flame. Aries, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Aries, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Here we go. If I can get it. <laughs> All right, one, two. All right, new love. Let's see. We have the five of cups, the eight of pentacles, 
and the two of cups. There is some type of disillusion, uh, disillusion or a feeling of being let down. <clears throat> there is this energy that is quickly changing for you, Pisces. So if you feel right now like this connection is not really going anywhere or you feel like there's been a just disconnection, they've been pulling back, or perhaps for some of you guys, they've even ghosted you. Do not rush into feeling like they're not interested because I see them coming back around and wanting to put effort and explaining to you exactly what was the reasoning for this disappointment that you feel you're going through right now. Um, it's almost like talking it over and being completely honest and transparent. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be that this person got, uh, you know, on an emotional uh, confusion situation where um, there was this feeling of hopefulness. So it could be like an ex or a person that they're still dealing with, but it's not because they want to. It has more to do with responsibility. So it could be like baby mama, baby daddy type of issues. Um, but they're coming back around and I feel like they wanted to iron the situation out before addressing it. Um, so you will be hearing from them now for others of you, it could be that there was a disappointment. We just experienced Valentine's day. So it could have been a situation where you were hoping or wanting, you know, the thoughtfulness, the catering type of energy, um, the showing me that you appreciate me in some shape, way or form, and it didn't happen. Um, but I feel that life happened for them. Uh, so it, it's it's a bit of a misunderstanding, but they will be reaching out. They will be, like I said, ironing the situation out um, and telling you exactly what's been going on in their life. Now, the card we have here is focus. So focus has a lot to do with your mentality, Aries. It has a lot to do with um, just because something is challenging, or just because something is not going the way you expected it to, it doesn't mean that it's not that it's not unfolding the way it's meant to. Um, so a lot of the times, especially if it's a new connection, a lot of the times things can go progressively good. And then all of a sudden there's a halt or there's a stop. And there is many reasons for that. But one of the main reasons is when you have a very strong connection with someone and things are just magically falling into place and then all of a sudden there's a halt, there is almost this, if you're a person that is extremely confident, you're a person that, you know, you trust without feeling like people are with like, you know, hidden agendas and stuff, you're going to trust the process. You're going to be like, okay, you know, maybe they're busy. Um, maybe things are happening. I'm just going to wait it out and wait for them to reach out. And then there's the other the other uh, side of the coin, which is your insecurities. If you have unhealed traumas, your insecurities are going to kick in and be like, red flags, red flags. This person is inconsistent. But if they've never done this and this is the first time they do it, there's not really inconsistencies. It's just that you're judging based off previous experiences with other people. I hope that makes sense. So what they're telling you here is focus ideally Keep your mind positive and optimistic on the outlook or the outcome that you're wanting this connection to go instead of sitting there and overthinking and jumping to conclusions. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to your old love. Let's see what's going on here. We have the three of pentacles, the chariot, and the nine of swords. So they felt empowered. They felt like they had the upper hand at some point. For some of you guys, it could have been a situation where this person cheated on you or stepped out of the relationship um, and they felt empowered. And that always happens when a person steps out of a relationship or they leave you and then they quickly jump into another relationship um, and everything's magical and everything's awesome, right? But that person that they were dealing with was very aware that they had or maintain still a relationship. So what starts wrong ends wrong. And when things are going great for them, it's very easy to assume it's going to stay that way. And then boom, karma happens. Um, so what I'm seeing here is them being empowered or maybe even being 
like, oh yeah, you know, they've moved on or whatnot. Now there's remorse. Why? Because it didn't go the way they thought it would. Um, so I would not be surprised if you hear from them uh, somehow uh, throughout this month. Um, don't bet on it. Keep it pushing because this person is not deserving of your energy and your effort. It's like they assumed um, the grass was greener on the other side and it wasn't. And we have potential here. And what they're showing me, I'm not sure if you guys can see clear here. There is like a mountain. And you can see the sky. What they're showing me here, it's almost like um, an energy of you've put in the work. You've put in, maybe in this relationship, you went the extra mile. You went above and beyond for them. Um, and there is like comfortability in that because it makes people uh, think that they can take us for granted, that we're always going to be there. And what they're telling you here is that the potential in this cycle, in this connection, is the realization of what your worth is and the fact that you deserve better than that and not settling and not rushing into going back to what didn't work out. Um, and again, the potential is focusing on the future. There are better things to come for you. You deserve better, Aries. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. New love and old flame. Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. What's going on for them in regards to new love? Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Okay. Let's see what's going on with you guys. This is you guys' year, by the way. We're talking about career, finances. <clears throat> Okay, spiritual message here for the new love and old flame. Okay. <clears throat> Taurus, sudden and rising Venus. Okay. Let's see what's going on. New love. We have the four of pentacles, judgment, and the hermit. If there's been a disconnection, a pulling away, a ghosting, it has a lot to do with other people outside of the connection or outside of the relationship. For some of you guys, it could be that a specific friend got involved. Um, could have been some type of rumor uh, that affected this connection. If you have a, as an example, if you know this person's circle or if they know you type of thing, or it could be family, family that got involved. Um, I see gossip. Um, I'm seeing them becoming more reserved or pulling back uh, because they're being challenged. They're being challenged in the aspect of uh, having to connect with what they really want. So you may be dealing with a person that uh, potentially has like a uh, toxic family energy for others it could be that they have toxic friend dynamics um but i feel like right now you may feel like they pulled away completely like they went cold and again i feel like it's outside energy for some of you guys it could just indicate that their social circle has them distracted um or has you know uh, kind of like kind of like having the circle of friends that you as a dating person don't like um, because it's <clears throat> the type of energy of like wanting to just create what's the word I'm looking for I wouldn't necessarily say chaos but trying to steer up shit um, so again my advice is stay clear 
if a person is going to pull back because they're going to feel intimidated or they're going to allow other people outside of the connection to affect their decisions, then you don't want to be with that person, point blank, period. Um, and the reason I say that is, think about it. In the long run, do you really want to date a person that if their mother doesn't agree with dating you, it's going to become an issue and you're constantly going to feel like they're doing whatever the mom says or the dad or the brother, et cetera. Like it is an issue. It will become an issue. So my advice is keep it pushing. Your next card is express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Here's the thing. If the person is disconnecting from you or pulling back, you have every single right to express how you're feeling. Um, if in any shape, way, or form, they make you feel like you're asking for too much or you are very like picky or you're nitpicking at, the, at them, like they somehow flip it around and make you feel like you're asking for too much or you're needy, et cetera, you're not. And you have every right to express what is affecting or what you're thinking as far as the connection and relationship. And if they immediately shut that down, then again, stop wasting your time. All right. Now let's go to Old Flame, Page of Cups, the Emperor, and the Two of Swords. They're definitely still in their feelings about you. Um, they're definitely still having feelings for you. And I will go as far as to say that this person may be experiencing almost like uh, reminders. They're seeing, you know, your name pop up or uh, bumping into people or places that you used to go to with them uh, type of energy. I feel them in their emotions, but they're stubborn and they are prideful and I don't see them reaching out or trying to contact you. Excuse me as I sip coffee. Uh, yeah, I don't see any movement. I don't see any momentum. I feel like this person is too prideful um, and in their ego. Um, but they are definitely still, they're still hung up on you. And we have calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So... From what I'm sensing, I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is a soulmate that's coming in. Um, even for those of you guys that are already dealing with someone, if there is a deepening of a connection um, or a feeling like you've known this person for a very long time and everything feels very organic, uh, you could potentially be dealing with a soulmate. Um, and for some of you guys, this person will be entering or has entered your life right after this relationship. So if you're still hung up on your ex, it's time to move on, <laughs> move on. I don't see them reaching out. Um, they're very much in their pride. They're very much like not wanting to see that they are at the cusp of losing you. I mean, obviously they lost you already, but they're at the cusp of an ending cycle. Why? Because there is an energy of a soulmate energy coming through. So for some of you guys, you may be meeting the person that's going to either elevate or give you a higher level of commitment that you have not met as of yet. Okay. All right. Now let's go to Gemini, let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, new love and old flame. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. Spiritual message for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love, new love and old love. New love and old love. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. All 
All right, new love. We have the 10 of cups, the wheel. Wow, six of pentacles. Beautiful, <laughs> amazing energy, Gemini. So for some of you guys, those of you guys that are single, I do see a connection, a relationship coming through for you. For some of you guys, the, you're going to experience this um, many different aspects. So what I mean by that is Gemini, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or Venus. Um, there's going to be different time frames. But what I'm seeing here is for all you Geminis that are single, there is a connection, a higher level of commitment that's coming through for you. And it could be from now all the way to June. Um, it's like your luck is changing. Your love life is about to take a higher level of commitment. Um, this is destined for some of you guys especially those of you guys that are between the ages of 28 all the way to 42. I feel like there is a connection that is going to be unfolding for you um, that has a lot to do with your planet astrological, uh, astrological alignments um, because the wheel does represent a higher level destiny. Um, and with the 10 of cups, it is a person that is destined to come into your life. For some of you guys, you may already be dealing with this person, um, especially if this person is a Taurus, a Leo, an Aquarius, or a Scorpio, um, or Earth-based, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn type of energy. Um, but there is a, like I said, a deepening of a connection. It is reciprocal love. It is um, the healthy type of love that is unfolding. Uh, for some of you guys, if you're already dealing with this person, it could have been that you met through very funny or weird circumstances. It's almost like uh, your, you know, both your paths were aligned and you collided. Um, and I see an element of surprise. You were definitely not expecting it, or you weren't um, searching for it. Uh, it just so happened to come into your life. Um, if you feel like that's the type of connection you're dealing with, you may be dealing. Uh, with the person that you're going to commit to. Now, your oracle message here is going forward. So again, I see a path and the path is definitely showing here. Um, and it's like I said, I feel like there's an element of surprise to this connection. Um, it could have been like, uh, they're giving me like a funny or like a weird connection that happened. It could be as simplistic as, pulling to the side because you got a flat tire and the person that pulls up to try to help you, turns out you guys hit it off. Um, or it could be as funny as like going to the supermarket and accidentally bumping into someone and then boom, you guys kind of fall for each other type of energy. Uh, it's going with the flow basically. So again, uh, your love life is definitely going to take an upswing as destiny is in the driver's seat right now. Beautiful reading, you guys. All right, Gemini, let's look into your past love. Two of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles. There is almost this feeling of trying to balance the finances. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're dealing with baby mama or baby daddy type of issues. Um, I feel them really being stubborn or being stuck in the mud and not trying to make life easier for you. If that's the case, um, or if you were still hopeful that there would be some type of working out of this connection, it's time to keep it pushing. This person expects you to be the one to thrall over them. They're expecting you to be the one to um, chase them. And you do not chase, Gemini. I know I don't need to tell you guys that, but there is an element here of having to don't allow people to have such power over you. When I say that, I mean in the sense, as an example, if this person you have kids with, right? And you feel like the things that they say to them or how they treat them, um, they do this purposely because they know that it will come back to you or that they will tell you or that they will communicate to you what they said or how they treated them or whatever. And the reason why they do this is because they feel like they still have some type of control over you. The reason I say that is the two of pentacles is here. And I, what's really standing out for me is 
the strings that are attached to each pentacle. And it's a red string. So it's like emotional manipulation. Rise above that. Um, if you're dealing, if you don't have kids and you're still dealing with the next partner that will randomly or occasionally message you or occasionally make it seem like, well, yeah, I'm thinking about it, about trying to work it out. Don't waste your time because this person is just emotionally manipulating you into keeping you there um, to their convenience. So don't fall for that. And we have caring connections. Again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is a connection that's going to be coming through for you guys um, where you're going to be able to understand or fully feel appreciated and feel loved, uh, loved in a different form, a different type of love, a love that you have not experienced as of yet for many of you. Um, it's reciprocal love. And whenever spirit... Uh, communicates reciprocal. It's the healthy type of love. It's the love where it's not you um, just going above and beyond for the person. It's the other person, your other partner putting the same effort and coming in with the same energy. It's about, you know, wanting to cater to you, wanting to know your needs, your wants, your desires type of energy. You go from begging, right? Or wishing or hoping because there's lack of love, there's lack of consistency to caring connections, to going towards a healthier, more bountiful type of love. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love and old fling. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Here we go. Spiritual message for Cancer. <laughs> Spiritual message for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Or new love and old love. Answer. There we go. All right, here we go. Answer. Six of wands, king of wands, and seven of cups. <laughs> You're dealing with the person that is very inconsistent. This is a person that's very prideful. It's a person that is they're used to getting what they want. If you feel that you're being challenged right now, Cancer, in the sense of feeling like you have to chase them, this person is full of shit. The reason I say that Six of Wands is a very prideful card. It's a card of I am the shit and I know it, or I can pull, I can get anyone I want. King of Wands, um, facing the Six of Wands, it's like they see themselves as you know God's gift. Uh, and Seven of Cups, it's entertaining other possibilities, entertaining other people, um, finding options. And there is a bit of the returning. So for some of you guys, if recently there was ghosting or they weren't communicating and now they're communicating, it's no accident. It's because their choices have diminished or the persons that they were interested in are not really reciprocating, or perhaps they, you know, um, caught up to their BS. Uh, so now they're coming back, feeling entitled, like you would take them back, or you would continue communication. Now, wonders, again, this is a person that is not looking for any type of settling down. They're not looking for they're not looking for anything monogamous. This is a person that really runs off of, you know, excitement. Um, so if you're definitely looking for a higher level of commitment, it's not it here. Um, if you are hoping or thinking that maybe the reason why they're coming back or the reason why, you know, they're communicating more often than they did is because they're 
they don't have a lot of options right now. So you are no one's second choice and you are the price. You shouldn't have to fight for someone's attention. And that's the vibe that they give me. It's almost like they're used to people, you know, catering to them. Um, if this is the energy that you're sensing or that you're feeling or you're feeling like they've been off, it's because of that. So don't waste your time there, Cancer. All right. Now let's look at old love, eight of wands, the fool and the empress. Well, they're definitely coming back around. I see a person from your past coming back around, communicating. That's if you've that's if they haven't communicated with you already. I do see some type of form of communication, either through social media or um through texting. And they are wanting a second opportunity. They are wanting a second chance with you. Why? Because they've realized that either they effed up or they realize that you are in fact the price cancer. Um, I feel like there is authenticity to their wanting to reconcile with you. Um, they're being real in the way they express themselves. Uh, if they haven't, when they reach out, I feel like they're going to be like, I've missed you cancer. I've been thinking about you and there's no lie there. Um, I do see them, like I said, being authentic in wanting to win you back is what I'm hearing, especially with the white dove. It's like they're being pure or true with their intentions. And you have the courage Oracle card. So for some of you guys, it was a painful or hurtful separation or an ending, perhaps abrupt ending. Um, but there is possibility of reconciliation here. And the courage card just indicates having the need to be courageous. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes um, we don't always get it right. And doesn't mean that we're not destined for each other, or it doesn't mean that they didn't love us enough. Uh, we all have hangups when it comes to love and when it comes to relationships. And sometimes um, it's difficult for people to understand or be perceptive of the other partner's needs and their, you know, way of loving, their form of loving, um, because we all love very differently from our experiences, from our past experiences. It molds us into the person that we are now. So again, um, it's going to take the courage. It's going to take the you know, letting go of the fear of failure again, or the fear of getting hurt again, um, to want to, to have to, or to desire the wanting to give, give it another go. Um, but like I said, I feel like this person is being honest with their feelings about you. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to, Let's go to Leos. So let's see what's going on with my lovely Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love and old flame. Three cards for each spirit. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. New love and old flame. <laughs> spiritual messages here for leo sun moon raising venus regards to love new love new love and oil flame All right, Leo, let's see what's going on in regards to new love. Honey, you need to let go of the feeling of the feeling of am I ever going to be happy again? Um, now I know Leo's gasped right now, right? You're like, oh, I would never. <laughs> but there is a fear of 
I'm not seeing movement or I'm not seeing anything exciting happening in my life in regards to love and romance or like you start off connections and it just falters. It doesn't really become anything. Do not uh, be patient with yourself, Leo, because what they're showing me here is the reason why you haven't been as inspired when it comes to love and romance is because you haven't met your equal. Um, and the moment that that person comes in, you're definitely going to know why, because you're going to be very passionate about it. You're going to be very intense about it as you naturally are. Um, and it's not going to feel forced. It's going to feel very organic. Um, and their pursuit for you is going to be very strong and very evident. So if you're currently dealing with someone and there's a feeling of restriction or there's a feeling of they're not really trying, are they interested? Is it hot and cold type of thing? Um, if that's what you're experiencing, then it's not there. It's not there, Leo. Why? Because I do see a beautiful connection coming through. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's going to be moving forward or moving past the person that's in you, in the way. Because what I'm seeing is like a doorway and I'm seeing someone standing there. There's a shadow and then there's a person that's coming in. And it's like they're trying to come in, but something or someone is blocking it. So again, I feel like there is this little bump on the way or on the road that you're currently going through. If you're dealing with someone and it feels like it's being forced or it feels like I'm not going to be chasing if that's what they're wanting type of vibe, then it's not there. Keep it pushing. Why? Because you will be embracing a new connection that moves forward or that comes through for you. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going into this energy from now all the way to May um, is where this connection happens. And I feel like I said, you're not going to doubt it because they're going to go hard for you, Leo. We have the temple path, and this is about destiny. This is about realizing um, that sometimes being patient after a while could feel frustrating. It could feel like you've lost your footing, or it can feel like you're so tired of like not being able to share your experiences with someone that you kind of force yourself into dating or going out with people but then you feel like disillusioned about it because it's not that exciting. And the reason is because you're kind of forcing yourself. You got to let the energy flow and vibe with your energy. Sometimes embracing, sometimes embracing our singlehood is the most healthiest way to be able to embrace new love. Why? Because all that energy and all that effort when poured to ourselves will mirror that energy. So anyone that comes towards you will come towards you with purpose. Why? Because you love yourself and you're vibrating from a very high frequency and only those that are at your capacity or at your energy are going to feel drawn to you. And that could be the reason why you just don't feel connected with anyone right now because they're not matching your energy. So again, be patient. You're on the right path, my lovelies. All right, for those of you guys with old love, we have the three of swords, the nine of wands, and the five of pentacles. This is definitely um, heavy ass energy. And what they're saying here is know your worth and keep it pushing. This person, um, I feel like they are remorseful of how they treated you or how things ended. However, I feel like they're not really taking any type of self-responsibility. Yes, they're remorseful in the aspect of I lost Leo. Um, I lost an amazing person. Uh, and I know that because I've tried it out and they don't match who you are or they haven't met someone that was everything you are. So they've realized that and they understand that, but they're not really taking accountability for I betrayed the Leo or I lied to the Leo or I hurt Leo because I let them down. Um, and I don't see any movement like them trying to reach out or trying to contact you or anything like that. I don't really see any momentum in that. And I have the solitude card. So it could be the reason why they're remorseful. It's kind of like when everything's going amazing in your life and all of a sudden you start to deal with difficulties and then where you thought you had options, you no longer have options and you feel lonely. And then you have time to sit there and think. And that's why they're remorseful because they don't really have a lot going on in their lives. So move on from this, Leo. All right. Now let's go to 
Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, new love and old flame. Give me three cards for each. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are new to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button so you guys get notified of the most recent videos going up. For those of you guys that have been with us for a while, thank you, my lovelies. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to like and share. All right, now let's go to your Oracle cards. Whoops. You guys, my rings keep falling. It's like my fingers are getting smaller and it's so annoying. <clears throat> my ring fell out and... It was just like a random thought. <clears throat> I'm over here like, oh, my rings are falling. And they're like, focus. <laughs> All right, here we go. Virgo, Oracle message. What is the spiritual message that we have for Virgo for new love and old flame? All right, here we go. All righty. All right, Virgo. Let's kick it off. We have Ace of Cups, King of Pentacles, and Two of Pentacles. <clears throat> you may be dealing with two people, Virgo, what's going on there? You may be dealing with two people. You are definitely excited. You're definitely very, very captivating right now. If you're not experiencing that, you will be experiencing that in the next couple of weeks. I feel like there's momentum in your love life that's going to start to pick up. Now there is almost like for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a person. This is spanking brand new. There is this feeling of having to choose or having options. For some of you guys, it could be that there is still your ex sniffing around uh, or you entertaining them while you're open to this new possibility. What they're telling me here is that this relationship or this connection has potential. They are definitely interested in you or it's a person that will be coming into your life that is going to make it very known, very proactive in the pursuit of your love. This is a person that shows through actions, not words. Um, so if you're the type of person that has a need for the person to constantly tell you they're interested in you, this is definitely not the person. And you may feel at some point in this connection, like you don't really know if they're interested because they're not very vocal about it. However... If this person is going out of their way to make time for you, if this person um, is thoughtful and shows up or when they see you, they show up with something that you told them that you liked and they tell you, you know, I thought of you and, you know, I seen this and I thought of you, so I got it for you. Pay attention to details in regards to that Virgo because that's how they show that they care. I feel like it could be a uh, almost a form of miscommunication, but it's because you guys have two different ways of showing love or showing uh, interest. So again, um, if you are dealing with two people or you are entertaining an ex while dealing with a new person that's coming in, um, be very mindful of that because you can disturb that energy, meaning you can prolong the, you can prolong the, momentum um things could be going well and then all of a sudden there's blockages and the reason for that is because there is uncertainty regarding to what you want um so be clear on that now your spiritual message here is forgiving and learning as you release and heal the past your experience <clears throat> the past you experience more love in your present moments so again, I feel like this has a lot to do with what I just said. If you are letting your ex sniff around or still text you or still communicate with you, um, you can't expect the new connection or the new relationship to flourish if you are indecisive about what you want. Sometimes people can show up to our life and be very decisive. Like they will chase your ass. They will go above and beyond. Um let me give you guys an, ex an example. Um, I was dealing with a person that was very proactive in the pursuing of me, um, going above and beyond, casually sending me DoorDash, uh, sending me flowers, et cetera, et cetera, um, while entertaining 
uh, I wouldn't necessarily say an ex-partner, but an old fling. Um, and everything was going very well with that new connection. And all of a sudden there was like this slowing of pace, uh, which quickly, um, I was, uh, I don't want to say told, but kind of told, um, to get it right. Uh, and, and the reason is because things are going very well, but sometimes we could be hung up or my situation wasn't so much about being hung up. It was just, it was always exciting. Um, and I wanted to have a good time. So, uh, but in that aspect, um, sometimes you can miss opportunities because you feel like you want to move forward. The moment that, um, you know, something exciting or tempting comes back around, you could be tempted. And it's like, you're telling the universe you want or you're ready for a relationship, it gives it to you. And then, you know, circumstances change and you change your mind. And that's what the forgiving and learning card is about. It's about releasing and healing the past, moving on from it so that you could be more present in your love uh, energy or in the energy that you're experiencing with love at that moment in time. So, yeah, I have a lot of those experiences. <laughs> I run away from commitment, you guys. <laughs> but at least I'm honest about it, right? I'm 100% honest about it. I do not deceive. I do not lie. I keep it 100. So moving on, let's go to your past lover. <laughs> definitely still hung up on you. Um, definitely still hung up on you, uh, Virgo. Um, what they're showing me here is Again, I see two of wands, so it could be communication already happening. Um, however, don't let this distract you from the future, from what you want. Um, two of wands and the Knight of Cups, it's out of all the knights, the Knight of Cups is not something consistent. It's someone that is very inspirational, someone that is very passionate in its moment. With the two of wands, it's the communication or the reaching out, expressing their feelings. But four of cups here is like, how long is it going to really last? You know what I mean? There's no consistency there. It's like circumstances right now. Like, yeah, you know, I'll reach out to Virgo uh, type of energy. But like, is it really going to last? No, it's not. So again, don't get distracted by that. Passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Passion is always a beautiful thing. But not when we're talking about exes. Why? Because you can run off of, and this is something that just came through. So for some of you guys, if you're dealing with an ex or if you're having sex with an ex, while not knowing where you stand with them, just know and understand that they're already taking what they want from you. There is not going to be an elevation of anything. So if they're stringing you along or making it seem like I'm still thinking about it, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure because we've been through so much and I don't want to deal with that type of thing. The only reason why they're telling you that is because they know that's why you're being physical with them. So be mindful. All right. Now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, New Love, and Old Flame. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All righty, Libra, let's see what's going on with you. What can you expect? This is spiritual advice here for Libra regarding new love and old flame. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Libra, new love, nine of pentacles, page of cups, and ten of wands. 
make sure that this connection or this new person that you're dealing with, you're not really dealing with them because you're bored and you want some type of excitement in your life. Why? Because I feel like, excuse me, I feel like you're not fully embracing your singlehood, Libra. For some of you guys, it could be that you've been single for quite a while. And at this point, it's like, why not? Um, but I feel like this person that you may be dealing with or that currently you're dealing with um, may become very emotionally needy. It's kind of like the clingy, the clingy type, the type I hate with the passion. Um, no judgment for those of you guys that are clingy. <laughs> I understand that everyone has different forms of loving, um, but I just cannot stand that. And it's almost like, dealing with the person that initially is, oh yeah, you know, I'm interested, there's physical attraction, but then quickly you start to realize like if you, if they text you and you, you know, don't text them back because let's say you're working, for instance, they throw a fit. It's like the type that, it's the type that texts you and you don't answer. So they kind of text back responding to their question it's like they have a full on conversation because they're so upset that you're not texting them. That's the type of vibe I'm getting. And it's like, you started off with not fully wanting to be single anymore and giving yourself the opportunity. That's how you convinced yourself of getting into this connection. But the 10 of wants is like too much to deal with. Why? Because the page of cups is next to it. So it's like I said, it's a clingy type of energy. Um, make sure that if in fact you are dealing with that or could be vice versa as a general reading. But if you're the clingy one, Libra, make sure that if this person, if you've noticed that this person is like less consistent with their communication with you, back up a little bit, give them their space. Um, and if this is you, the one that's that, you need to vocalize that. You need to, you know, express yourself fully and tell them like, hey, um, you know, if I don't respond to you, don't take it personal. I'm busy or something came up or whatever it is. Um, people need to understand uh, the need for space. I think that there is a healthy way of maintaining a relationship and like I said, if both of the partners are extremely needy, then that's amazing, right? Because there is a constant, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There is a constant um, feeling of being reciprocated. But if one or the other partner is kind of the one that needs, you know, their space or their room, it's healthy, you know, it's healthy. This is why I tell clients it's important when going into any relationship. It is crucial to maintain other aspects of your life. Don't just fo like fully focus on the relationship because the relationship is only one part of your life. Then we have relationships that completely consume your life, whereas it doesn't work out and everything falls apart. And it's like your life is falling apart because they were your whole life. You have to make sure to nurture every single aspect of your life. And if this person is like that in the beginning, you can only imagine how it's going to be like, it's going to become a drag basically is what I'm seeing here. So again, be vocal about it. If you feel like this person is too needy or too clingy, instead of waiting for it, like for you to like not be able to stand them, um, be more compassionate about it and make sure that you vocalize or that you are straightforward with, hey, you know, um, give me some room, give me some space uh, type of energy. Because if not, you're just wasting your time. <clears throat> and we have solitude. So <laughs> the need to run away um, or the need to want to have some space. Um, like I said, everyone has different ways of loving and we need to understand that. When you really care for someone, you're going to be very observant in their needs when it comes to relationships, when it comes to emotions. Um, like I said, myself, I am a person that is extremely not needy. I need my space. I need my solitude. I love my solitude. So if you see me go out of my way, um, 
as an example, to be more consistent in spending time with you, then that should show you through actions that I am consistent and that I do care and that you matter to me. Um, but I also need to have my solitude. So there will be times where I kind of retract or pull back um, or, you know, hey, let's hang out. You know, no, I'm, I just need some, some time for myself. And my partner has to be okay with that. They need to understand that. Why? Because if they cannot understand that at some point in the relationship, that's going to become an issue. Uh, the beginning stages of a relationship is you're directing how it's going to uh, continue moving forward. And if you don't address certain issues now, it's at some point it's going to become an issue. And that's where relationships, you know, where they fall apart. So be vocal about what you want. Um, what your needs are. And sometimes we feel like we need to hold back because we don't want to hurt the partner. But think of it this way, you're doing a disservice by not being honest with them. Because at some point, they will trigger you or you will retract or you will ghost them just because you need a breather. And you feel so much in your head that you need it. But to them, it's a disservice because they don't know what's going on. And then they go on panic mode, etc. So again, Keep it honest and keep it transparent. Be honest, basically. All right. Now looking into your past connection here or the past person, we have the emperor, the hierophant and the devil card. So there is still the hope or the desire of attaining you, of wanting, wanting to reconcile, but it's more of a situation of feeling like you belong to them. Um, or like there is a spiritual connection here, but it's like they mask the spiritual connection. It's almost like for some of you guys, it could be dealing with the next kind of like a situation where you guys break up and they're telling you like it was destined how we met, um, you know, the stars aligned, we're meant to be, I'm always seeing, you know, uh, synchronizations about you, it's, et cetera, et cetera to make you feel like it's a destined connection, but it's hidden. That's hidden behind the devil. And the devil is all about toxicity. It's all about manipulation. So be mindful of that. If your partner's never been spiritual and all of a sudden they're like, you know, I was listening to, um, I don't know, astrological alignments. And it's like, they were talking about an ex or or I had a dream about you. It's bullshit. They're just telling you that because they want to manipulate you into feeling like, oh yeah, we are destined to be together. We are destined to give it another go. Um, and again, it's it's very powerful cards here, you guys, because they're all major arcanas. The emperor is stubbornness. It's egocentric type of energy. Um, it usually speaks about structure with the hierophant. Um, which could potentially be the desire to want to take it to the next level or to commit. I lost this person and I love them. And now that not having them, I realize I want them and I'm willing to commit if that's what it's going to take to work it out. But with the devil card here, this is an indication of more of like manipulation or manipulating um, in a form of spirituality or in a form of making you think that it's destiny but they're not being transparent about it. And the reason I say that is because the emperor is coming up to me as reverse position, which is stubbornness, egocentricness, um, pride. And the only way I can use this to manipulate this person is making them think that we're destined or that I got a message or that I dream about them or whatever it is that they need to do to open some type of communication with you. So don't fall for that and the temple path, finding yourself, finding your path. It is about cutting losses. For some of you guys, it could be that this was a marriage, a uh, separation that you're currently going through or a divorce um, where you felt like this person, you gave them so many years of your life and you feel a little bit lost. And this person is trying to manipulate you into returning or giving them another opportunity but the temple path is about you understanding that the temple is within you, that you are the creator. Um, you're the one that decides, do you deserve better or do you settle? And if you settle, you cannot 
blame anyone else or allow other people to manipulate you into making those decisions because ultimately a decision is a decision. Um, even if not making a move or not making a choice, it's still a decision. You're still making a choice by not deciding, um, by not deciding to close the door, by not deciding to, uh, empower yourself or believe more in yourself or have more faith and more confidence in yourself and your capabilities. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love, new love and old flames. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we got cards flying out. Here we go. All right, Scorpio. Let's get into it. New love. No way, you guys. You seen me shuffle. You seen me shuffle the cards. <laughs> we got the exact same cards that we did for Libra. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Libra energy, but this is new love and Libra's was past love and the emperor is upright. So there is a higher elevation of commitment that will be unfolding or that currently is unfolding. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with an Aries, with a Taurus or with a Capricorn. What I'm seeing here is Aries placement for some of you guys, if you're dealing with an Aries, it could be their sun, moon, or rising. Um, the devil card could represent Saturn energy. So wherever Saturn is placed in your chart for some of you guys, um, if you're female, this is meaning the partner you're going to marry. Uh, whenever we get, uh, when wherever we have Saturn in our chart, whatever house it's in. Um, for some of you guys, you may have it in an Aries position. Um, this is indicative for females, uh, the partner that you're going to marry or the partner that you uh, will begin a very long-term committed relationship with. Saturn is always durability, longevity. Um, and the Hierophant is talking about higher level of commitment. Um, the emperor in its rightful position, which is... Um, not in reverse. It indicates a person that is looking for structure. It is uh, about making things official. And they're, the three of them are major arcana. So what they're speaking here about is, for those of you guys that are single, there's a person that will be coming into your life from now all the way to June. Um, and this is a person that may be older than you, could be older than you from four to seven years. This is a person that knows exactly what they want. And this is a person that is financially stable. For a lot of you, um, Scorpios, I feel like you haven't dealt uh, with this type of maturity. Like I said, for some, it could be uh, that the person is older than you from four to seven years. Um, but it feels more like this is a person that has their life together. This is a per this is like, this is no F boy or F girl type of energy. This is a person that has their life together and that are dating with purpose. And you will definitely know who they're talking. If you're not dealing with anyone, you're definitely going to know when they come in, because this is a person that is not going to be like, Hey, let's hang out. Let's Netflix and chill. No, this is a person that's going to come at you direct. They're going to be like, hey, I'm interested in you. Can I have your number? Then they're going to hit you up and they're going to be like, hey, can I take you out on, you know, in a dinner, on a date? Um, let's get to know each other. 
and moving forward, they're going to be very consistent. This is a person, like I said, that's not playing about you, Scorpio. Now, for others of you, if you are currently dealing with someone, if you're masculine, I feel like you may be dealing with a Capricorn energy, Capricorn female energy um, that has, uh, like I said, uh, some type of Aries placement. But I feel like this person that's coming through is definitely a different level of quality is what I'm hearing. Quality is what I'm hearing. Um, so again, for those of you guys that are currently dealing with someone, there is almost the feeling, <clears throat> a feeling of like, uh, okay, so I'm getting two messages. There is a feeling of maturity in regards to this uh, connection. It's almost like old school vibes is what I'm getting. So for some of you guys, it may throw you a bit back because you're not used to that. Um, now for others of you, it could be that you had met this person or were interested in a person that's older than you. Um, but you wouldn't have thought that they would be interested or that they would reciprocate the, you know, wanting to get to know you. And I feel like there is a revelation that happens for you guys in the next coming months. So like I said, it could be from now all the way to June, um, but they are definitely coming with purpose. <laughs> and like I said, you may be dealing with the Libra um, and we have abundance. So again, I feel like your love life is going to take a definite upswing, Scorpio. Um, there is a lot, a lot of promise in this new connection for those of you guys that are single you won't be single for long, and it is something that is going to be worth while for you. Beautiful energy here. All right. Now, in regards to old love, we have the Nine of Pentacles, Page of Cups, and the Queen of Pentacles. <coughs> Interesting. So, what I'm hearing is I feel like your partner, or not your partner, but your ex-partner, thought that they wanted freedom. So there is an element of like the rug being pulled off from under you. It could have been an abrupt ending, or abrupt uh, pulling away or pulling back from you um, before you guys called it quits. And I feel like they thought that they would really need some time off or like they needed to find themselves, um, which is BS to me. It just seems like being single was very tempting for them and they decided to move forward with that. But now they're understanding that they missed out. They're wanting to come back because they see the value in you. Now, here's the thing. When I hear, when I hear I see the value in them and it's a person from the past, they don't serve you. It's that simple. Why? Because they needed to not have you in order to realize that they want to have you when they had you. Do you get what I'm saying? This is a person that is immature. This is a person that does not know what they want. It is a person that will have a diamond in their hand, find a pebble that is a pretty color, And they will drop the diamond to get the pebble only because it's new. To get what I'm saying. So what they're telling you here is value yourself, Scorpio, to not, do not fall for it. This is a person that is not going to commit like ever. Um, I mean, they may at some point, but not any time in the near future and not with you. This is a person that is in the nine of pentacles energy. This is a person that loves to be single or that um, acts single even when they're committed. So you don't want this type of energy. Um, you deserve so much better than that. The nine of pentacles is the energy of singlehood. Um, it is the energy of acting single with the page of cups. Even if they are emotionally invested in someone, they're emotionally immature to know the difference. Um, man holding a coin indicates to me, uh, for some of you guys, this could be a masculine energy, obviously, but I feel like it has more to do with the feeling of attainment or the desire of attainment. 
It's like I had Scorpio. I let them go. I know that, um, you know, I'm not going to find anything better, but I had it at some point. So I'll be able to get them back type of thing. Um, more like objectifying you. Um, and it's like I said, I'm, I, what I'm seeing is they're showing me a belt with like batches. Um, if it's a masculine energy that you're dealing, this is a fuckboy type of energy. This is an energy that, you know, I got Scorpio, I got, you know, um, I got the chip of, you know, being able to attain Scorpio, I'll be able to get them again. So don't fall for that. And don't fall for their like loving words. If they are already communicating with you, I feel like they will be reaching out and there will be communication, but this person, like I said, is not, it's very immature energy. So keep it pushing there, Scorpio. All right. Now we're going with Sagittarius. Let's see. Oh, we got cards. Give me a second. All right. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, New Love and Old Flame, New Love and Old Flame, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, oh, we got cards popping out already. Okay, here we go. If you've been thinking, Sagittarius, of cutting out this person because they're not communicating or they're not consistent, my advice is definitely keep it pushing. This is a person that is immature. This is a person that is entertaining other possibilities or other opportunities. And it's also like stalker vibes. It's like they're doing their own thing and they know that they are not fully investing in you. Uh, so they don't really know what's going on with you. And because of that, they stalk your social media or they look at your social media um, to know what's going on in your life. So again, it's it's, uh, it's negative energy. I don't like this energy. It's a person that likes to play games or that is just wasting your time. Three of Cups is embracing other energies other than your own. Queen of Swords, you've been thinking of cutting them off, but you are unsure. Page of Swords, they watch you. Um, they watch you. They play, uh, they're keeping an eye on you um, all the while entertaining Three of Cups. So again, it's uh, not good, not good energy. Keep it pushing. Don't waste your time. What is the spiritual message here for Sagittarius, Sun, and Rising Venus? There we go. What the heck? All right, we have embracing. I think that it is time for you to embrace. If you can see here, there is like ashes in the air. Um, being able to see clearly or accepting the things that are uh not focusing solely on the hopefulness of the connection, but it's time to embrace what is and let whatever needs to burn, burn. Um, burn that bridge and burn it quick. <laughs> you don't want to embrace what is inconsistent. You don't want to um, make room in your life for a person that is going to have you holding on or chasing them because there is a habit of inconsistency here. There is a habit of uh, being sneaky. And it, I just don't like the energy. Um, embrace what is. Move forward. Make room for new opportunities. Make room for someone worthy of you, Sagittarius. 
All right. Now let's look into old love here for Sagittarius. Knight of Wands, the Empress, and the Four of Swords. I don't see communication opening up. I don't see um I don't see them really being proactive in trying to communicate or reach out to you. However, I do see them um being very watchful of what you're doing. Uh, there is a certain situation here with you. There's like a glow up that's happening. For some of you guys, you could have recently dyed your hair. For others of you, you could have done something different. Um, could be the way you style your hair. It could be for men. It could be that you're growing out your mustache. Um, there is some, there's like something that has Venusian energy uh, that there was some type of elevation of your vibration on the physical aspect. <clears throat> for others of you, it could be that you are being more mindful or you are working towards some type of manifestation. And that in essence is really raising your vibration. Um, so there is a feeling of like missing you and the fear that you're moving on. Um, and that could be the reason why they're watching you or why they're trying to you know, grow some, you know what, to reach out to you, but I don't see it happening this month. And we have change. So again, I feel like a lot of you guys are going to be going through this cycle of major changes that are happening within you. It's almost like the desire, like I said, Empress is um, Venus energy. So there is a glowing up a higher elevation or being more mindful or doing certain changes to your physical appearance. Um, and it's not really that you're doing it kind of like the situation where you break up with someone and they tell you, Oh, start posting and look amazing on social media. Like, no, I feel like you're doing this because there is something within you that wants to feel confident that wants to feel worthy. And the worthiness of it has more to do with taking care of yourself instead of worrying of other people. Um, for some of you guys, it could have been that you've gone above and beyond for your ex. And at this point, you're focusing solely on you and you're doing you. And that's what has you like attracting a lot of people or a lot of people being drawn to your energy and they're watching that. They're definitely noticing the changes in you. Um, fully embrace those changes, sweetheart, and embrace the change that they're not there and do not, um, do not hold up or wait up for that X. All right. And finally... Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, New Love, and Old Flame. What's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? In regards to love and romance. New Love and Old Flame. Oh. All right, here we go. Alrighty. Give me the spiritual message for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raven, Venus in regards to love and romance. New love and the old flame. Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raven, Venus. Oh. All right, here we go. We have the Eight of Pentacles, Five of Wands, <laughs> and Knight of Wands. Capricorn, you're going to notice, especially those of you guys that have been very like focused and determined in your finances, in your career, or like literally burying yourself with work, there's going to be a definite upswing in your love life. I see a lot. <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> that was... That was funny <laughs> when I said a lot. I coughed in my high, my pitch or my voice went very high pitched. That was weird. Okay. 
Um, Capricorn, I see a lot of passion around you and there's a lot of excitement. I feel like for some of you guys, there's been this, you know, kind of like momentum, but not really that intense. Like it's going to be in the next coming months. I see you guys focused and determined in your goals and aspirations, but I also see that, um, really drawing in a lot, a lot of people, a lot of attention coming your way, a lot of people trying to attain you, trying to win you over. Um, I even see, you know, uh, it, it's giving me the vibe of like, um, so let me give you guys an example. Whenever, I don't know if it's ever happened to you guys where you're dating someone or you're talking to someone on the low, like, you're not making it publicly known, but then you post a picture on your Instagram or your Snapchat or whatever. Um, and then someone comments like, oh, you look so beautiful or whatever. And then the person you're talking to goes there and they're like, you know, uh, tries to make it seem like they're claiming you type of thing, um, like that type of bickering happening. And that's what I'm sensing. So for some of you guys, it could be that, uh, you know, the person that you're currently dealing with may start to show some type of jealousy or some type of possessiveness. It's not negative energy. I feel like that's not really who they are. I just feel like they're scared or intimidated that you're getting a lot of attention. Now, for others of you, um, I feel like there is a connection that will be forming and it's connected in some shape, way or form to your career or how you make money. So it could be a situation where a new person is moved to your department and there is this in immediate physical attraction or connection there. Um, and this is a person that is really going to make themselves known or let you know there is something about they've been hesitant, but then they start to notice people trying to get your attention and then they become alpha, right? They start pumping their chest or they start, you know, um, wanting it to make like visibly known that they are interested in you with the man holding a heart it indicates to me a person that is definitely emotionally available this is a person that is ready to open their heart or that is ready to let you in their heart so what i'm hearing for a lot of you guys is if you're dealing with someone right now that perhaps you guys feel like um uh, you've been going through challenges or whatnot. I feel like it has a lot to do with this person had issues with emotionally opening up, but I feel like as the days go by, you're going to start to notice that they start to open up and be more vocal about you, about what they want, about um, making it known that they are definitely like emotionally available and ready to pursue you or to take it to the next level, even for some of you guys. But I definitely do see a lot of passion. Um, it's giving me like high school vibes, like <laughs> when, you know, it's kind of like the person that you're dealing with starts to notice other people desire you. It triggers something in them and then makes them want to go harder for you. That's the type of energy that I'm sensing here. Not necessarily a negative a negative thing definitely uh really embrace it Capricorn <laughs> especially those of you guys that are single let me tell you I see a lot of passion options there but definitely someone that will be opening up or professing their true interest for you that will go hard to win you over now now let's look at your ex or the ex-partner Interesting. We have the Empress, Page of Cups, and Queen of Pentacles. They definitely see you as the end-all, be-all. Um, they're still hung up on you. They have not moved on. However, Empress and Queen of Pentacles is indicating to me two different energies. So I feel like for some of you guys, you will be hearing from your ex or ex-lover will be reaching out to you um, because they realize what they've lost. They realize that all of a sudden they have feelings for you. And I say all of a sudden, because it's like, now they see you like the Empress energy um, with the Queen of Pentacles, like the attaining or the wanting to get back. Um, and I say all of a sudden, because it's an ex, right? So <laughs> they did something to lose you. Um, stay in your energy, Capricorn. I feel like you guys are going to be very empowered or feel like you're very empowered in the next coming months. Um, we have Saturn. Um, we have Saturn uh, going out of Aquarius, um, which is the ruling planet of you and Aquarius and temporarily going back, but then leaving it, leaving again, and finally leaving that sign. 
Um, so depending where you have that placement, um, I feel you guys being very empowered. I see you guys very focused um, in attainments and succeeding. And I feel like this person is an ex for a reason. Is there potential here? Yes, there is. Because the Empress with the Page of Cups, it's like they're willing to give you their love. They're willing and ready to give you their love. But again, it is an ex. Um, and what I'm saying that is the Empress is a higher elevation of all the Queens. So you're in that energy Capricorn and the Queen of Pentacles could potentially represent another energy, um, which again, like I said, the Empress is the higher, the hierarchy from all the Queens. Um, so in essence, uh, they could have been entertaining someone that was not you, the Empress, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, so what they're telling you here is they fumbled the ball. Let them take that loss because I see you more focused and more determined on better things for you, Capricorn. And the car we have here is financial constraints. So for some of you guys, it could be that they realize Capricorn is where it was at. Why? Because I don't have to work as hard or because they make things happen. And I, you know, the other people that I'm entertaining are not half as what Capricorn is. Um, so it could be, that could be the reason why they're reaching out for others of you, especially if this was a situation where they relied on you financially, that could be the reason why they're trying to win you over as well, because they're having difficulty and they're needing help. They're needing a mommy or daddy and you're past that. So keep it pushing. Don't entertain that energy. <clears throat> All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings, like share and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys soon. Wishing you guys all the best and we'll see each other soon. Bye.